So we're going to talk to you today about uh, cartographic tips within Adobe Illustrator with Map Publisher. My good friend Hans will help me out with this today. Uh, a lot of the cartographic techniques uh, Hans has actually provided us insights into, so thank you Hans. So we're basically going to run some uh, videos, um, some of the online tools. We didn't really want to trust the Wi-Fi, so we'll just run the videos that we've uh, pre-canned. Anyway, I guess we've been introduced already, at least I have, so um, we'll give you a goofy picture instead. So this was taken in uh, Colorado Springs at NASIS 2016. Um, so this is basically uh, a globe made by Hans with Map Publisher. So today we're going to talk to you about a few topics, general tips and tricks, uh, as I mentioned. Um, so we'll go through these uh, these items today for you. So as a product manager, I'll be speaking to the why we actually introduce these features, and I guess as it, as it pertains to uh, cartographic production and the, uh, I guess the insights that Hans has provided us, he'll actually explain why he decided to modify the tool to to meet his needs. Over to you, Hans. Right, so this one is actually one that came up a lot in the production of the globes. Um, so there's a lot of cities on them, but not all of them that are in the natural earth data set I'm actually using on the map. And so what I figured out is that there's a way to, um, let's see if I can get this to play. Um, the natural earth data set has a scale rank attribute. So first I'm placing that scale rank value as a text on top of my city symbols to give me a sort of a, a reference which, which city is more cartographically important. And then hopefully it'll be visible. There's little white numbers appearing on top of my black circles in a few moments. And so the idea is the, the lower the number is, the more important that object is for the map. And the next step is I'm gonna take the interactive map tagger tool to place the city names on a new layer. And I've set it up so that the attribute structure of the original city points is copied to those texts. So I'm happily labeling my map. And once I'm happy with it, Once I'm happy with it, I'm going to remove the city points and I'm going to export the attributes from the labels I've just created, which still include the original latlon values. So export those to a text file. And then re-import that text file which my publisher will then turn into points again. Mm. And the end result is that all of the cities that I've decided to label are the ones that are shown with symbols. And so there's no orphaned symbols or orphaned labels on my map anymore. Back to Nick. Okay. So in version 10 of Map Publisher, we introduced the capability to uh, to crop data on import, um, and we've extended that in version 10.4 based on a request from National Geographic. Um, so we, we now enable new users to, uh, to actually crop data to the extent of an art board. So in this example, this is the, uh, the parks within the GTA in Toronto. Um, so basically I have three art boards in place. So there's a trim extents and a map extents artboard. So you can see here that I'm importing the entire um, transportation infrastructure of the GTA. 
So that will be fit to the outer artboard. Uh, you'll see the matching map view found dialog actually came up because it, the incoming data matches the coordinate data of the layers themselves. So you can see that's all of the data, but I don't really want all that data. So with the crop to artboard feature, you can actually bring in just what you need for trim or just what you need for the actual map itself. So if you want to move your extents of the map around in the future, you can actually capture the data within the trim, if that makes sense to you. So here I'm importing data just to the map extents. So that's an actual artboard in the middle. And then I'm going to undo that feature and bring into the trim extent. So you can see here, I'm cropping to artboard and I'm selecting the name of the artboard from the list. Pretty cool. So. This is one that actually came up um, through one of my clients at a training course last year. Uh, they do a lot of work with maps for the Middle East, and they told me during the training course that over there it's more common to have arrows pointing towards Mecca rather than north. So I filed a, uh, a feature request with Avenza, and we now have an option to have a custom location for where the north arrow is supposed to be pointing to. So I'm placing a north arrow in the normal map publisher way. And as you can see, as I move it around, that it keeps pointing towards, in this case, geographic north. And next I'm adding a so-called map world location, which is a sort of a, I guess, a bookmark to, uh, to a geograph geographical location within my publisher. I originally wanted to use my own hometown, but nobody here has ever heard of it except for me, so I assume you've all heard of Amsterdam. And then in the map view editor, we have an option to specify a custom location for the north arrow, either by giving them a let long or selecting the world location. And we can also determine we can also decide whether to use a great circle or a geographic way of having it point there. So now as I'm moving the north arrow around, you'll notice that it keeps pointing towards Amsterdam. So as, as we all know, the world is always changing. Um, so th this capability that we also introduced in version 10 allows you to update your map based on changes to the source data. So I guess everybody that's used Map Publisher has used the importer to bring in shape files, map info files. Um, you know, as infrastructures change, uh, populations increase, symbology needs to change. Um, this kind of capability allows you to actually do an instant refresh um, once you've established a link between layers in your Illustrator file and the source data. So this example is going to show you an extension to the Young University line in Toronto that opened uh, late last year in December. So you can see here that the yellow line um, is based within a map theme. So we've got style sheets that set up the visual properties of the line, all basically tracked back to attributes. You can see the four subway lines down there on the left, and they all have unique symbology, styling, based on the attributes themselves. So I've actually set up these two map layers to actually point to shapefiles on this same computer. So you can see now that the shapefiles are out of date because they now contain the extension to the Young University line. So I'm checking these now in the Manage Data Links dialog. This is where you can establish your connections. So you can see here, this is where it resides currently. This is the shapefile that links to the line layer in Illustrator. So I'm going to click this Update button within the Map Views panel. I'm going to choose to update the TTC stations, which is the Toronto Transit Commission. And you can see now that all of the new stations have come in 
with attributes intact. I'm also going to do the same with the lines. So just that extension to line two, Young University. You can see now when I click on the line, it has the Young University line name maintained. I know we're struggling for time. Okay. So I often make maps that are part of a series, so multiple maps with the same sort of base data but different regions. And once you've set up um, one of your maps in Map Publisher, it's actually quite easy to copy all of those settings onto the next map, which is what I'm doing here. So I'm having a small series of two maps, one of South America, the other one of Africa. The South American one is already set up with a map theme and with an inset map with a locator. There was a map selection in there. There was a, a map world location. The Africa map doesn't have any of that, but using the copy map objects, I can select which objects I want to copy from the other open map and will basically import all of that. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's there, it's just working. Okay, so finally, this is a sneak peek into version 10.5. So this is the November release, the one that will coincide with the CC 2020 release from Adobe. Um, so we finally introduced interval markers or distance markers into the application. So for those of you that make trail maps, um, bike bicycling maps, this is all very much uh, in your ballpark. So if I choose the right video. Okay, so I've chosen to, uh, to basically place uh, mileage markers along the I-5, the, uh, the highway that runs down the west coast of the US. Um, so I've basically selected that line, open path utilities. So there's a new path utility now, at interval points. So as I've only selected that line, I'm gonna check the only apply to selected art objects. I'm going to output those mileage markers to a legend layer. So I'm going to basically place them at 200 mile intervals. So this is where I set 200 and international miles. Okay, so I'm going to start them at the first vertex, which I know is close to the Mexican border. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, create circles for my interval markers. This is where I set the font for the distance. So now I'm modifying the shape appearance itself. And the size of the circle. And then enables me to preview my changes as well. So you can see now when I move the dialog over, this is what they look like. So you can see there's a transparent background. So I want to give that a fill. Okay, so when this is released, we would appreciate all and every piece of feedback we can get. And I know we've got one more video. And the last one is about the, uh, the find places option. So quite often I get requests from customers to map a small handful of locations on a map that I'm doing for them. And they may not always be stuff that's available in your source data. They may be historic or they might be small towns or whatever. So having the find places option um, is actually a, a great time saver. So you can basically enter what you're looking for. It comes back with the number of results. Uh, you can pick from the list which ones you want to include in your map. And it's added to your map as a separate layer within the active map view. And that saves a whole lot of time and makes it a lot easier. Okay, that's it. So I just want to remind everybody we have a workshop on Saturday, so 9 till 12. I think we have about three spots left. So. You know, we, uh, we urge you to sign up if you want to get an intro to Map Publisher. So that's Saturday morning, 9 till 12, Cavallino.
Thanks very much.